at Minglewood Farm and Nature Preserve. Thank you so much for joining us today on our soil science lesson. Now, before we get started, what is soil? Hmm, well, let's think about that for a moment. I know that soil is made up of three different types of inorganic particles. One of those inorganic particles is sand. And if we were to look under a microscope, we would say that a sand particle is rather large. Now there's another type of inorganic particle that makes up soil and that's silt. If we were to look at a silt particle under a microscope, we would see that compared to a sand particle, it's relatively smaller. And the third inorganic particle that makes up soil is clay. And the clay particle in comparison to silt and sand, as you can see, is quite smaller. Now, one thing that we've done here is we've taken different soil samples from around the farm here at Minglewood, and we've added a little bit of water. We shake it up really good, and then you can actually see those three layers of sand, silt, and clay separated. Now, if I were to ask you, the sand particle, it's the largest and heaviest particle, do you think that it would sink to the bottom, or do you think that it would float to the top? What do you think? Sink. That's right, it would sink to the bottom. So if you're looking at one of these soil samples, you would see that the sand is at the bottom, the silt would rest on top of it, and then those tiny clay particles would find its way on that top layer. Now you might also notice that aside from the sand, silt, and clay, there's a layer that's floating around on the top of these jars, and that's organic material. What do you think organic material is? Hmm, let's think about that for a moment. Plants and animals. That's right, organic material is made up of once living things. So it's plant materials, insect materials, and animal materials as well. That's all naturally decomposing and it finds itself on that top layer. Now let's investigate these different layers of soil samples from around here at Minglewood. So the first soil sample that I want to show you is clay. Now let's take a close look at this here. What do you notice when you see these clay particles? When you feel it, what does that feel like? What does that look like to you? Does it look really tight and compact? Now this is red clay and this came from close to our creek down here in one of our watersheds. And you can see that sand is at the bottom. There's a little bit of silt and a large chunk of clay right there. And so you can see that that's really thick and really dense. Now, do you think that if a soil was primarily composed of clay, do you think plants would successfully grow in that? Hmm, let's think about that. Why or why not would a plant be successful in just very clay soil? Let's move along over here. This sample of soil was collected by the creek here at Minglewood. And you might notice that this is quite different from the clay that we just looked at. Now, if you took a look at this, what do you notice? How is this different from the clay? You might notice, wow, there is a really large sample of sand here. There's a small layer of silt and a very tiny layer of clay at the top. And there's even some organic material floating on top. And if you were to compare that to the clay that we have right here, you would see that those are quite different. Now on the other side of that spectrum, why do you think a plant may or may not be successful if it's growing primarily in sand. Well, one thing's for sure, if you were to pour water through this, all of that water would just drain right through the sand. So it would drain a lot, it couldn't retain a lot of water, and you'd also probably have to put a lot of nutrients in sandy soil in order for it to grow. All right, now let's look at this one over here. This one is called loamy soil. Now loamy soil is found here in the Piedmont region of North Carolina, and loamy soil is what makes growing here so wonderful because it has a really great balance of sand, silt, and clay. You'll see that there's a lot of air pockets. It's kind of dark and rich. There's a lot of nutrients in there. And if you take a look at this jar, you'll see that there's a nice balance of sand here at the bottom, a nice layer of silt, and then that clay layer at top. You'll also notice that there's a good amount of organic matter floating around on the top there. Now, let's take a look at compost. This is the last 
type of soil that we're going to take a look at today. And this also looks quite different from some of the other soils that we've looked at. If you'll notice here, there's a lot of sand at the bottom. There's a small layer of silt, a tiny layer of clay, but there's an awful lot of that organic matter like eggshells and twigs and leaves and things like that floating around at the top. That's one of the reasons that compost is so great adding to the soil because it is so high in nutrients. And if you take a look at this, you'll see how dark it is. And you'll see how many nutrients are in there because it's all just broken down organic material, which makes compost so great for farmers. Well, as you can see, we've collected a variety of different soil samples from here on the same property at Minglewood Farm and Nature Preserve. Now, each of these different types of soils, whether it's sandy, clay, or loamy, they're important in their own right. Now, too much of one type of soil is not necessarily beneficial. If you only had clay, it would be quite difficult for farmers to be able to plant things to grow. But there are things that you can do to add to the soil to help it become beneficial. So for example, with the clay soil is you can add a little bit of sand and you can add some organic matter like compost, such as leaves and twigs and things that are organic to help break it up and help aerate that soil. Now, what about the other side of that spectrum? So let's say you have soil that's too sandy. Well, it's gonna be really difficult to grow a lot of crops in sandy soil because it won't hold on to those nutrients and the water is gonna drain really quickly, so it'll dry out pretty soon. So if you find yourself with sandy soil, you'll also probably have to add things like compost or nutrients back into the soil to make it healthy and farmable. Now, one of the reasons that farmers absolutely love the soil here in North Carolina it's because there are plenty of nutrients and the soil is able to drain efficiently. Because of these reasons, almost any plant can be grown in loamy soil. The soil of the Piedmont produces some of the best farmland in the state with the greatest variety of crops, including cotton, tobacco, timber, and corn. Hundreds of years ago, European settlers found their way to this region because of the high quality soil and availability of water. With a diverse geography, North Carolina is home to more than 400 types of soil. Most common, though, is the state soil, sessile. Thank you all so much for joining us here at Manglewood Farm and Nature Preserve on our virtual field trip all about soil science. As you can see, we've covered a various uh, degree of different soils that we found right here on the farm. Now, one thing I would love for you to do is to collect soil in your own backyard. You can do this experiment where you collect some soil, add some water, shake it up really well, and you can actually see those sand, silt, and clay layers for yourself and determine what kind of soil you have. I hope you all learned a lot and have a great day. Mm -hmm.